18-year-old Ruth Whitman was murdered and found dead in Colony in 1959. Her story was forgotten until just a few years ago when police started writing a new chapter in the investigation that includes a lover, later arrested for another murder, and a serial rapist and killer. Jerry Gressinger has tonight's Cold Case 13 report. Her body was found on the side of Sand Creek Road. She'd been beaten, left for dead. Cause of death, drowning in the shallow water of a drainage ditch. 18-year-old Ruth Whitman had no identification on her, so police asked the community for help. Turned on the radio, and I heard they found this body. And she had just described the ring, which was hers. It was December 7th, 1959. 82-year-old Nelson Paul was just 21. When police brought him to identify the body, he recognized the victim as Ruth Whitman, his fiance. I cannot fathom how it would have happened. The night before her murder, Nelson was at work at the White Tower restaurant in Albany. Ruth was seen not far from the apartment they shared on Lancaster Street, watching emergency crews battle a house fire. She was with a man depicted in this artist rendering, who was never identified. Days later, Ruth's autopsy would find she was newly pregnant. I didn't know she was pregnant. I really didn't. Nelson assumes it was his child, but what about the man at the fire? Did Ruth have another lover? Or was she, as some police interviews suggested, a sex worker? Nelson admits his memory is not crystal clear, but says he remembers enough to not believe that. No. That's, like I said, you know, she was a virgin when I met her. Nelson was an early suspect. The couple drank heavily together and fought, sometimes violently. I hit her once, I have to admit that. His alibi was strong, and Ruth had been driven from Lancaster Street to Sand Creek Road and Colony, about eight miles. Nelson had no car. Still, suspicion was raised again two years after Ruth's murder, when Nelson was arrested in Canada for killing a man in a drunken bar fight. Police re-interviewed him then and now, but Colony investigator Kevin Terry came to the same conclusion his predecessors had. All of us walking out of the room were pretty confident in the fact that he was not the person that was responsible for killing Ruth Whitman. Nelson is one of the few people still alive with first-hand knowledge of Ruth and those who were around her. An absent father who returned home just before Ruth was killed. Close relatives who spoke poorly of her. Nelson's mother, who didn't like Ruth, and her boyfriend, who may have liked Ruth too much. I don't think we can rule anything out. And what about the mysterious man seen with Ruth at the fire the night before she was found dead? Terry has reviewed those living in the area at the time, and one name jumped off the page. That lived within about a half block of her uh, was an individual by the name of Robert Garrow. The upstate serial rapist and spree killer moved to Albany in 1957, but wasn't really known to police until 1961 when he raped a teenage girl. He would later go on to kill four people in the Adirondacks. Could Ruth Whitman have been his first victim? I don't think we'll ever be able to rule that out. Thanks to advances in DNA forensics, the evidence collected off Ruth's body, fingernail scraping, strands of hair, could be used to eliminate or generate suspects. If only they could find that evidence. The evidence that was collected has just disappeared. Gone. Um, we have done extensive searches uh, with uh, responsible parties from the state police, from the Albany police, and from the colony police. Unless it turns up like Ruth's case file did, the only way her murder will be solved is if someone who knows something says something. For a 60-year-old case, time is running out. If you, a parent or grandparent, know anything about the murder of Ruth Whitman, or Ruth in general, contact Colony Police. With Cold Case 13, I'm Jerry Gretzinger.